Well, no doubt uh, 2020 has been a very rough year for the hospitality and tourism industry, especially hotels, boutique hotels, bed and breakfast, campgrounds, uh, restaurants, everybody that's connected with tourism, attractions, museums, uh, even visitor bureaus have been you know, really affected with this and some chambers of commerce, too. Uh, and this is a global, I suppose, you know, COVID is really a global issue and it's been a rough year, um, but you know, a lot of a lot of people are still troopers and hanging in there and moving forward into 2021. And we're very excited to talk about what you can do as a bed and breakfast and in a boutique hotel, a hotel, um, and even, you know, any business moving forward and going, okay, how do I keep going? Take a breather. You need to get some publicity out there. Uh, show what your business is about. Maybe your region is about because, you know, it's always good to not just promote your business, but it's good to attach your community to it. And so that's what we're going to talk about next on today's show with Big Win Radio Show with Maria Coder. She is the founder of Bed and Brunch Marketing and PR, and they specialize in getting creative. And we know that because we connect Maria the first time. Well, we've we've got press releases and worked with her before, but uh, specifically with the still in business campaign that she did in 2020, uh, getting all these uh, innkeepers together to showcase who's open and uh, get got a lot of media buzz like Forbes magazine, all kinds of magazines and uh, newspapers and webs and uh, websites and blogs and radio shows and podcasts, um, got a lot of attention and it really helped the bed and breakfast and inns. And um, so she's creative and she sits down with innkeepers and, uh, you know, hoteliers and looks at what can they do? What do they have and what can they do? So we're excited to have her back on Big Blend Radio today to talk about what can you do as a business to move forward in 2021. And I encourage you to go to her website, bedandbrunchpr.com. So welcome back, Maria. How are you? Fine. Thank you. How are you? So glad to be here. Yeah, you too. It's good to have you back on and exciting to talk about what we can do. And I think that's the, one of the beauties of what you do is always about moving forward. Um, no matter what life throws at us, you got to move forward. You can't, you can't hang out there and just, you know, you, you, you don't want to get in the quicksand, right? You got to move forward. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And the thing, too, I think what's very interesting about what you do as a publicist is that you've been on the other side of the coin as a journalist and also as an author. So you know, like, the whole, you've got the writing skills, but you also know what journalists are going to want to receive in their email box. Yes, and, you know, I, I find that to be very helpful because journalists, um, their their inboxes are crammed. I mean, they've always been mm-hmm. crammed. But especially yeah. now, more so than ever, that, um, you know, like if you work at an office, you are likely working from home now. That means um, you might not be listening to your voicemails in the office as much. You might have some sort of message saying to email you instead so that the inbox is getting fuller. So that means that the um, the subject lines to yeah. people's emails has to be even more creative than before. Oh, yeah. The subject this line. That's true. important. Yeah. yeah and people – I'm. What about getting calls? I mean, do you, I mean, that's the thing. I feel like this day and age, people don't pick up the phone anymore. I mean, do you, do, is it more polite as, if someone's going to pitch someone to send an email before just picking up the phone? You know, there's different schools of thought on that. Um, mm. I, I like to, I like to email and I also like to call and I mix it up. I don't always do just one. Sometimes I email and I call. It depends on what I'm looking at, what's in front of me. Um, if I'm really trying to get a hold of someone, I will call first. And I, mm. I know that, 99% of the time they won't pick up, but then it opens a window for me to send an email that says Maria for voicemail because mm-hmm. they don't want to answer the phone and they definitely don't want to listen to their voicemail. So now they have like basically a short transcription of what I said in the voicemail. So it's more likely to get read, I feel, and responded to. Hmm. That's a good wow. point. And <clears throat> yeah, right, Nancy? We always talk about this, about the I phone know. issue. It's like, hello, if you're in business, pick up the phone. I'm sorry. Well, no, that's a good point, too, because I know you've given us five points on um, what to do, what what B&B owners and innkeepers and hoteliers can do. I know a lot of these strategies are are things that other people can use, but one of your tip number four is stay ready. And isn't that part of it? Like, don't Mm -hmm. you put something out there, and if you start getting a response, don't ignore it. Yes. Yeah, don't ignore it. And also, you know, look for opportunities to be proactive with whatever it is that you've created that you're staying ready with. 
Um, mm-hmm. the, the worst thing is to finally get, like, the, the dream journalist knocking on your door and not have anything to present them with. You know, you want to always have something, even if you're not um, actively sending press releases out and all that. You still want to be ready with something. You don't want opportunity to knock, and then you're, you know, too busy on doing the triple bolted door to let anyone mm-hmm. in. <laughs> right. And the other thing, too, I wanted to touch on is, like, you are on the you have the journalism background, you're an author, but also you have a travel background. So that's another thing. I think that's important that you've traveled and you tra- you've traveled the world pretty much, right? Yes, well, kind of like you, um, maybe mm-hmm. not as broadly as you, but I, I grew up the daughter of a hotel executive. So I grew up kind of like Eloise, living inside the hotel mm-hmm. and moving, you know, country to country and, and jumping from one language to another. So I know the hotel business really well. I mean, I, I lived it. I grew up in it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's hospitality of um, is universal. It doesn't matter if it's a B&B or a hotel. It's, you know, you're still in the business of uh, personal relationships with people, with getting to know travelers, and with, you know, making sure that that guest experience is is truly remarkable. Mm. Exactly. And I think now it's even more important because if people are, I think they're looking, well, it's been a different thing um, travel this year. I mean, Nancy and I have been to a gazillion B and B's and inns and hotels and all and kinds of all things. Yeah, places. It has been, and it um, really has. I'm amazed. It, it it it's been interesting watching. Well, number one, the innkeepers. There's this fresh energy in the bed and breakfast yes. that I it just For uh, sure. it, it's and younger generations walking into the B&B doors and staying the night. We've seen so many first time B&Bers. Um, it's been amazing and, it, and interesting to watch the experience to connect. You've made, we've made friends with the, the guests and we've made friends with the innkeepers and the enthusiasm and the passion is like, mm-hmm. it's just amazing. All of them have just been so awesome. And it's all thanks to you, Maria, to connecting them with yeah. us and that we've had that experience because it's kind of changed our mindset a little bit of what B&Bs are, and I think they've changed in the last 10 years. But um, the one thing we've seen is, yes, a younger generation coming in through the doors. um, And people who want authentic travel are seeking out B&Bs and inns. Uh, They want that authentic experience, something that they can write home about, basically, or Instagram home about and say, hey, man, this is so unique and, and, you know, it's got integrity to the community. And and a lot of the B&Bs are not only... um, you know, providing accommodations and a unique experience. Part of the experience is the story of the inn itself, the story of the land. Um, that's something we found that these buildings a lot of times are something that um, that story could have been lost if they didn't run it as a bed and breakfast and that they're sharing this history. So it's like living history. It's a natural landscape. Um, so it's this really incredible experience but um, the travel has also changed for them. Like people are booking so fast, like suddenly they, they may not have bookings. And then in one day, it's like, can we come now? So a lot has changed up in that. So um, I think it's important that they get PR, but it's being beers and or innkeepers, I think are also having to be ready all the time right now. That's a big for part sure. of it. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be ready all the time right now. And also one thing that I want to add too to what you're saying is that the um, these innkeepers really, really take the um, CDC guidelines and all the cleanliness extremely seriously. You know, they not only do they care very much about their guests staying healthy, they care very much about the, they themselves staying healthy. And, mm-hmm. you know, most of the innkeepers live at the inn, you know, um, Mm-hmm. And so it's very important to them that, you know, that you don't get sick, that they don't get sick. They, they're they really taking this to heart in a way that I think uh, might get lost sometimes with the bigger hotel chains. You know, we found that to be totally true, that that, that was their primary focus as we mm-hmm. booked in, that, it, yeah, I didn't feel uncomfortable in any of them. Mm-mm. You no, know, like, oh, maybe yeah. we shouldn't be here because it doesn't look like they're really taking the steps they need to take but all of them were spot on with it like that was their primary thing was letting the guests know that we have done this this and this and that for your safety mm-hmm. and, and for theirs and their staff so. yeah and, be, and like one gentleman told us he's like hey you're in my home I don't want to get sick I don't want anyone bringing germs to do mm-hmm. you know so there's this balance and we as travelers have to be good with that but 
uh, Maria, so the stay ready part is is a really big, and and that's twenty four seven. So you know, it's, um, you got to have help with that. You can't be the one person only. But um, you talk about your first tip was take quick personal inventory and see what you have already that you can build upon. And I think mm-hmm. that's something that was a big lesson this year for innkeepers, and I think destinations too. Sometimes when yeah. we travel. We'll go on a media trip or a fam tour, and a chamber of commerce person or a visitor bureau will take us around, and we start looking at their community parks because we know people traveling with dogs want to take their park. They, they want to go to the community park or the kids need to run the kids, not always the national park. Not, no offense, we love our national parks. You know, that's how we started our tour. I love your parks tour, but there's certain little things that I think sometimes get taken to the wayside because we're always looking at the big thing. It's like if Disneyland's in our backyard, we're going to go and promote Disneyland instead of looking at some of the smaller things of what you have, right? And then there's towns right. that we go to that the B and B is one of the big deals of why you're going to go to the town, you know, and maybe a few other things, but you say look at what you have. Well, I think it's really important, especially now, you know, to take personal inventory and, you know, start where you are. What what is it that you have to offer? What makes you unique? Um, tap into those things and find a way to let other people know about them. I mean, I think part of it is uh, for innkeepers, you know, they, they live and they're in, they're used to what they doing, what they do, seeing what they see. And they sometimes forget that, you know, what they have is actually really special and what they, and the way that they do something or the, or some sort of dish or some sort of package that they have is really something special, but because they, they live it every day, they forget that that's so yeah. rare or so unique. And, um, I think mm-hmm. that uh, stopping for a moment to think about, okay, what is it that I ha- that I have to offer? What is it that uh, really sets me apart? And then from there, creating some sort of a package. Uh, the, the package is really uh, the number one driver for press for the inns. And if you think about it, uh, creating a package is what you're doing is you're creating something new and something new to be able to go out to the masses with, uh, whether it's uh, a previous um, guests or the media or um, – or just on your own social um, channels and your blog, it, it gives you something new to talk about and a reason to reach out to people. So packages are really key for innkeepers to get press. And, uh, you know, that translates to other businesses. If you have um, a small business, maybe a webinar is a thing, or maybe an event, anything, or an online event in um, <laughs> yeah, these days, a, a world. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's just having something new to talk about, something new to promote. And, um, that, you know, that's, and when you're putting, looking at it, what it is that you already have, like, let's say, for example, you're in offers free internet and you uh, always have, you know, coffee available 24 seven. And, um, you know, in the evenings you have like a little, uh, dessert hour or dessert is delivered to the room. And you might not even think that this is something unique, but if you stay at a, large hotel chain, you might have to pay for each cup of coffee. You mm-hmm. might have to pay for the internet. Mm-hmm. So um, so all those things are things that you can, you know, put into a package and cre- creating some sort of clever name or catchy title that goes with it, you know, can make or break the package, can, you know, mean the difference between a lot of press and a little press. So, and it's just packaging up things that you already have. You're not offering a discount. You're not um, you know, going out of your way to do something, you're doing what you've always done. You're just finding a way to talk about it differently um, in a mm. time for you to talk about it. You know, like the like the the um, desserts, for example. Maybe you've always taken desserts to the room, you know, but maybe mm-hmm. now you call it contactless dessert or something because that's a new buzzword, right? Everything has to be mm-hmm. contactless. Everything has. So you're doing the same thing you've always done. You're just calling it something different. And you're, it's all true. It's just um, rewording it and reframing it to fit the current situation. Ah, and, and updating your website with that because that will also help you yes. with your keywords. And keeping your website yes. fresh is key, man. I see, yeah, I see that even now people went and did their COVID things, and then they'll have like, oh, a blog that is from July or something. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. no, you, you've got to keep all of it really fresh as much as you possibly can. And rephrasing and Nancy you're the super geek on SEO right isn't that part of that is yes. you know fresh and refresh the pages yes and and you have to understand how you do how you put your keywords in where and when you put them in and it's really important because if your keywords are at the end of the article um, or page and you submit the page Google is not going to go to the end of the page 
you got maybe the first two paragraphs, if that. Mm. So you want to have your first par- paragraph have the keywords that mean the most for what you're trying to get out there. Mm. Okay. And they're not going to change either. You know, mm. I mean, it's it's all computerized. It's algorithms. It's It's not like people are reading what you've written. It's like... Stuff in and stuff out. <laughs> well, and when and when it comes up, like let's say the SEO gets you to the web to the web page that for a particular in, then mm. people are reading, and the thing that they get their yeah. eyes most quickly is a photo. So I mean, if yeah. you have um, that you're delivering photos to the room or individual breakfast yes. tables now, but you're still showing a long, you know, communal table, that could be a detriment to someone who's just quickly scanning. It's like, oh, I don't want to sit at that big table right now, you know, but. Um, you might not be serving breakfast at that table. So I think uh, updating the photos uh, at a time oh, like this is key too. And well, photos are actually really important because they go into the search engine too. And if you, and labeling your photos correctly, the way Google would like you and other search engines tell you to do or ask you to do is really important because sometimes mm-hmm. a photo will hit higher than a page just mm-hmm. because you've labeled it correctly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something to look at, too. The other thing, you know, that I see is um, from our travels is there's a lot more to see and do in in most areas than what the B&B people present, okay? And they may be thinking that leave it to the Chamber of Commerce or Visitor Bureau, but it, it and we've seen some B and B's with like brochure racks, just like a chamber of commerce or visitor bureau. And then we've seen others that whatever their personal interest is, they have things on that. However, you know, if you really, when you start to think like I, two of the biggest things that bring guests are birding and gardens. That's huge. Huge traffic on those two things, and I would encourage every B&B to take a look at what's your local garden. Do you have local gardens? Do you and what are just put a bird list up mm-hmm. because there's so many people that travel. They'll travel to get their their bird list fixed. They're like their their bird. The, uh, they, they've done they're all these birds. bird, yeah, they're life bird. They've been all around the world looking for different birds, and you might be right there with a bird that they need to have. But if you don't list it, they might mm-hmm. not find you. So, mm-hmm. and they until they yeah. see the birds. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's, I think that's it. I mean, that's what you talk about, um, Maria, is to see what you have when you're taking inventory. Mm-hmm. I think that's so yeah. important. Because yeah. it's an inventory of the town, it's the inventory of the inn, but it's I also think it's inventory personally of what you can offer. What are mm-hmm. your skills from the past that you're bringing to yes. the B&B? You know? Absolutely, yes. We've the One thing we've seen, Maria, too, is a lot of, of the B&B, uh, the innkeepers are becoming wedding efficient. And so this year, everyone's having elopements and small weddings in their backyard <laughs> you know it's pretty cool the b&b business has changed just over that so there's things like that to think of um when when you talk about creating a package um the one thing i did want to touch on because i just through doing marketing too for years and and you know the whole pr side of it and you create a package and you know i know we get excited about it whether we're doing it as a pr thing as a writing thing or as a you know, it's a story or maybe it's an advertising thing for a client. And it's like, oh, we have a package. Oh, so when they develop the package, it needs to be something that they can really handle and do and, you know, yes. know their limitations. However, if the package doesn't work and it gets picked up in media and it doesn't work, that doesn't mean it didn't work. It means you still got media attention. You know what I mean? Right. So that's the one thing I've seen um, in keepers and people go, oh, we do packages, but they don't work. So, yeah, can you address that part? Because it it doesn't really matter. It's like doing coupons and no one uses the coupon. You know what I mean? Or yeah. a giveaway. Get over it. <laughs> it's a, it's well, a actually, and, and sometimes I put together some packages that are really out there, really, you know, like uh, once I did um, a package, which was an end-to-end bicycle tour, and then the innkeepers would drive the, the guest luggage from one end to the other. And at the beginning, I remember the innkeepers thinking, 
oh, I, I don't really want to do that, you know, and I yeah. said, you probably won't have to. You know, the idea is to get you pressed for it, not that you're actually going to do it, and to get people talking about your inn and thinking about, like, oh, I want to go stay at that inn that did that mm-hmm. thing, not necessarily to come and book that particular package. And once we um, we discussed that, they were fine with it, and uh, the package did really well. It ended up on USA Today, like, immediately. And mm-hmm. um it was one of those packages mm-hmm. where I don't, I don't think that a lot of people booked it for that, but a lot of people came because they had read about it. So it mm-hmm. was, yeah, you're right. There is a difference, right? You want people to know about it and you want to use it as a vehicle to get guests and also media. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it doesn't really, like you're saying, it doesn't matter if they come specifically for that package. And oftentimes, like I said, it's better if they don't, because, you know, it's going to take time to do a lot of the things that um, the you or I or someone else might come up with for a package uh, the, the main idea is just for it to help get you noticed. Exactly. Yeah, and I think you you need to do at least 12 a year. You need yes. a monthly, well, this is wow. what we're doing this month. You need to do 12 a year. Really? Yeah, because. <laughs> Maria, really? 12? To do it? 12? I, th- I oh think my. it's always good to have something to go out with. I, I also think you could have the same package for, you know, two months at a time if, if yes. it's for that long, you know. Uh, but, you, but I think you always need to have something that you can be pitching, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, okay. And the package, let's talk about this with, uh, you talk about create a press release, a blog, do social media around your packages and everything. But the newsletter, too, is really cool. What do you think, yeah. I mean, don't, don't the newsletters, this, this one thing we've seen is not just b and I'm talking restaurants, I'm talking businesses. At the end of the day, if your newsletter is always a sale, it's like the package is cool, but back it up. Like if it's a birding package, for example, and maybe you're mm-hmm. doing an early bird breakfast and then they get a box lunch to go out bird watching. I'm just making this up, but I, you know, I know yeah. people who do this too, but you should be not just putting, here's the sale. Like, here's my package. It's got to back it up with some meat. Like these are the kind of birds we have. You know what I mean? Yeah. The newsletters have got to be more than a discount or a package that people are sending out. I would even say that the package, Yeah, I would even say for the newsletter, the package shouldn't be the primary thing. The primary thing should be highlighting the the amazing birds that people can see near your inn or, you know, they go down this waterfall hike and have a picnic. Like you want to Mm -hmm. tell the experience without talking about the package. And then at the end, you want to say, you know, you know, if you want to reserve now, we have this package that includes blah, blah, blah. You know, but first I would, you know paint them a picture of, you know, if they were not at their desk reading this, where, where could they be right now? What could they be doing? What would it feel like? What would it smell like? What would it taste like? Right. Oh, and by the way, want to do it here, you know? Yeah. Cause that's so important because when you go adver- advertisement first, I mean, we all click the button, the mute button on the TV, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, no, we don't want to hear mm. it right now. So it has to come in later, and it has to be done correctly. And I agree with you totally that the ad first thing and the hard sell language, I mean, that's old school and it's out. Mm-hmm. People oh, are oh, it. Hey, I, I do want to say one thing. Um, that's all very true for the newsletter, for, for the yeah. blog, for your social media. However, yeah. writing a press release, the most important thing has to go first. In that case, it would be, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, such and such bed and breakfast has this new, um, you know, package. Yeah. Bird getaway. You know, you yeah. want to start with a package because the reporter might not make it to sentence two. You know, so you do need to put that high up. Mm. Well, this and this is the exact same thing, and put the this is the exact same thing as what Google wants, what your SEO wants. Like Nancy mm-hmm. was saying, put the important stuff at the top, and we all read yeah. that way. Whether you're a reporter or not, like if you're going to read the article, you put the juicy stuff. There's that whole formula. Yep. And the other thing, would you say that people should put the press releases on their blog or website? I think it's, um, you know, a, a lot of people have blogs that are, you know, embedded in their website. So I think it's the same the same place. Um, if it's a separate thing, then whichever one is actually the same URL as all your other pages. So I guess in that case, a website, because I have seen some blogs that um, like pop up in a new browser window and are actually not directly connected to the person's website. And then 
uh, once you read the blog post, it's not that easy na- to navigate back to the actual INS website. So yeah. I would say mm-hmm. put it on wherever the bulk of your pages are. So if it's, mm-hmm. if your blog lives on your website and the URL is all the same, like the, the website address is all the same, I would put it there. Otherwise, I would um, make sure I put it on the website mm-hmm. and not the blog if that's the situation. And I think also for, you know, people looking at booking a place, when they see that there's a news center or a media center and you've got some professional, I mean, you've you got to call Maria, man. I'm serious because there's like things where you have your, your basic outline of who you are, the fact sheet. There's so much that goes into it, having professional photos at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're giving great tips right now for something people can just harness and go and do, you know, um, but at the end of the day, you do need help. And like we're talking, you know, Maria's like, oh, I'll pick up the phone. But guess what? If Maria calls me, I'm going to answer the phone. <laughs> Even if I'm sitting on the beach drinking wine, I'm calling, I'm answering the phone. It's Maria because we know each other. So I think there's something valuable of having someone even to coach you along maybe. Do you do that? Do you ever sit down and kind of help your clients, maybe guide them so that they maybe they're doing some of the stuff and then you're helping them set up the framework? I do sometimes. Um, you know, a lot of times it starts off that they want to do it that way, but then they tend to feel that they just want me to do it all, you know, but yeah. um, I, I do work that way with people. And I actually have one client that I work that way with now where I will say, hey, the I think the media is going to be writing about this next um, put together package and I'll review it. And so we do it like um, kind of not correspondence, like course, you know, a little bit more like coaching in that way. That's cool Mm. because I think some people have a talent for it, but I also think that it's important to have someone outside of, you know, not your neighbor. It's the same thing as writing a book. Mm -hmm. If you know, you can't have someone close to you read your book. Like, you know what I mean? You can't have your editor has to be outside of the situation. Um, Someone has to have that, you know, I, for an area, I think that's something like Nancy and I just find all the time we go somewhere, we'll experience an area and have this whole different perspective than what they've been marketing and Mm -hmm. it's the same marketing jargon that they've used for the last 10 years and the same photos for the last 10 years. It's like, Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You know? So it's like, (laughs) and they miss things because especially if they've lived in that place for a long time or even were born and grew up there and they know everything about that area, they don't see with fresh eyes what we see in value. So sometimes they need to go away and come back to re-see what they're promoting because we see that all the time where we're like, we're all crazy about this over there. And they're like, oh, I forgot we even had that. We're like, mm-hmm. okay. Um, well, and, and to that end too, like sometimes I tell the uh, some of my clients, why don't you, you know, pack a bag and go stay at your bed and breakfast as if you're the guest, mm, you know, stay exactly. there. Cause, oh, cause yeah. then you can also like experience the room, what's working, what's not that you might overlook exactly. if you're just, you know, tidying up. But now if you're actually staying there and using, you know, that, that sink and that shower is, you know, is the water pressure good? Have you, um, <laughs> is the remote actually out of batteries or whatever it is, you know, there's a bunch of things. There's mm-hmm. so many. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. I know, and and I think a lot of a lot of them are starting to do that. I mean, they're realizing. I think during COVID, a lot of them started saying, "Not yeah. time to revisit our rooms," and some yeah. even shut down for a month or or so during the year. Yeah, they um, had you to, know, they were they, mandated to. Yeah. yeah, and they was like, "Okay, well, let's vacation," and they start to learn. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't work for luggage to be here, or you know, it's it's mm-hmm. really interesting. I think this year has been really really hard, but at the same time. There's been a lot of lessons learned. I mean, for all businesses and people, you know, there's just been a lot of lessons. Um, the one thing, too, you said, create an email and sign up for Harrow. Help a, uh, Harrow, everybody says it differently. Help a reporter out. I remember signing up for that, and holy cow, man, we had weeks and weeks. We had wine and cheese, everything delivered to our door nonstop and for press. and for. I mean, it was insane. So I haven't personally used it for a long time. I get my emails every day. But I'm, you know, but I'll tell you what, this, this is one of the coolest, coolest places to connect people and, and the press together. I think it's awesome. It's really, really, really cool because if we're doing a story and I've used it, man, I've used it for blues stories about the blues. I've used it for stories on travel. I've used it for stories, yes, on cheese. You know, I mean, I, the people that come out of the woodwork, 
it's amazing because if someone doesn't know someone, they send some, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll recommend someone, you know what I mean? It's interesting. So tell everybody about this, uh, about creating that. Cause you said it's create an email. You don't mean create an email address. It's kind of like, you're going to like almost a boilerplate of what your business is. No, no. I actually mean create an email address because Harrow, when you sign up for it, you start to get, depending how you sign up, it's, it's free. First of all, Harrow is free. They do have some paid options, which you can subscribe to as well. But I've been using it for free for, yeah. I don't know, more than a decade. And I'd yeah, say like too, yeah. 50% of my placements come from there. So it's very, very helpful to me. Um, but the reason I say create an email address is because at least the way that I've signed up for it, I get three email digests a day. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, every day at, at the end of a week, that's a lot of emails if you don't delete them. And I have a problem deleting emails where I don't get to it right away because I like to make sure that I can go back and see things. And it just adds up and adds up. I mean, at the end of the month, you're looking at a mountain of Harrow's. So um, yeah. I started creating a professional-looking email it's just for Harrow and then signing up with that email. Uh, again, creating your free account. And uh, when you create your free account, put in that new free email that you created that looks professional uh, for Harrow. Because once you create an email address, you can only respond to a Harrow from that email address from whichever one you use to sign up with. Um, so you want it to look professional. You don't want it to be, you know, a, a tongue-on-cheek type of thing because it will be going to a reporter. And uh, mm. so how it works is they send out this digest, which is what, what reporters are working on at the moment. And um, there are all these individual queries from maybe 10 or maybe 100 reporters for the day. And they will say things like, um, I'm working on a story on – I'm just making something up. I'm working on a story on – you know, Christmas getaways in the Northeast, and they'll have a, a generic email address that you respond to. It's normally like query at harrow or something dot com, and um, it has an expiration date. It'll say, you know, Thursday, you know, October whatever, 2020 at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and then it'll tell you what they're looking for. And they might say, uh, must have Christmas tree components, uh, must be within a four-hour radius of New York City or whatever it might be. And then if you meet that that criteria or you close enough, let's say you meet three out of four of the criteria that they have, um, I would suggest that you respond to them. And you do a very brief, maybe like bullet point style, saying, hi, saw your query. Um, I have a Christmas tree uh, that gets delivered every year and whatever it is, say something about the tree because that was the first thing they said. Um, I am within a two-hour drive from New York City. I am reachable by public transportation, the New Jersey path train, this line, you know, you would give specifics and, um, so, you know, here's how to reach me, uh, uh, photos available, uh, Maria, and then send. And then uh, you can't send photos through Harrow. It doesn't allow you to, which is why they say photos available. Mm-hmm. So the person knows that you have photos, but um, you want to keep it short and sweet because they will be getting a lot of responses to this. And then um, if the reporter is interested, they will write back to you. And if they're not, they won't. And I, I, um, I say this to a lot of the, the um, new, new people out there who are pitching through Harrow for the first time. Don't get disappointed if they don't write back. Don't get mm. disappointed if you don't get chosen. It's a numbers game. Keep yeah. trying whenever you see something that's a good, good fit. Um, it, it doesn't have to be an exact match. Like I said, let's say you have three out of the four things that they're looking for. I would still submit it because maybe somebody yes. else submits and they only have two of the things. Exactly. But what you don't want to do is not have anything or have something that's very vague because you don't want to waste the person's time. You don't want them to not want to respond to you for that reason and maybe not respond to you after if there's something that's like a great match. So, um, you know, nurture it like you would any other relationship. Be mindful of what they're looking for and First, respond to what it is that they're looking for, and then if you want to add something else, like, oh, and by the way, we have this great, you know, end-to-end cookie tour we do every year. Here's the website for that. Maybe put that at the end if you want, but just make sure you're at the beginning answering everything that they're looking for. I, I've also seen with Harrow, which I, I and I love Harrow. I really do. I think it's just such a. I love the connectivity of it, and the opportunities yeah. for all sides of this. But um, it's it's really true because just being on the other side of the publishing side, you could think you're going to do a story on this and then you'll get like five people respond with like a whole unique side of it. And your whole story could change that you didn't think of as a journalist. And it gets this whole unique twist just by who sent in by by what you're saying with the, you know, if you have two out of three, do it because 
you know, it could be you and five other people that do it and you end up on some really cool list that nobody thought about. You know what I mean? So you yeah. never know because stories will change according to what is the best story and they will change up. And it's always about matching. It's not necessarily good or bad. It's not like, oh, they're looking at you going, oh, you suck. No, it just, this yeah. is the match for my story, period. So it's nothing about just keep doing it over and over. I think that's life in, in business. It's about matchmaking all the time. You know, we're always yeah. doing that. So, yeah, I think that that's, it's such a cool thing and it's such a cool tool. And, you know, I, I just, you know, when we went from being a print publication, from being Southwest blend and only covering the South and we were on Southwest and we had the website and went completely stopped printing and went completely online and started doing our radio show with Harrow that really, got us into being more international and national and it really was i have mm-hmm. to say that about that website it really did that whole service um suddenly we were interviewing they're like wine make i said something about wine and next thing you know we were interviewing winemakers in chile and argentina and you know france you name it <laughs> it's, like, it's amazing what can you know the relationships that can come from something like that but i do always think that there is a consultation that if you can hook up with a publicist that's important because really you guys um, and gals, I should say, um, really can help it get further ahead. You know what I mean? At least have the boilerplate stuff that you can tweak around. But it, it's important to have, like, make sure you do a, a grammar check on your press releases and things like that if For you're sure. doing it yourself. That's the thing we see, too. It's like, you know, that professionalism has to go in there with what you do. Yeah newsletter well part of it is for us is you know the um for as as you know like i feel like uh publicists just are so accustomed to doing this you know it's um not necessarily automatic but we don't really have to think about those things as much it's just part of what we do you know every day so it's Mm -hmm. um a little bit more um yeah i guess just the way that we go about you know business as usual um i i did want to say anyone who is going to harrow for the first time uh there are two ways to join one is journalist and one is source so if you are an innkeeper, for example, you would join as a source. Yes, mm. yes, because you're you're going to be providing the news, and the journalist, right. uh, you know, has has the the whole attention of that. So Maria, you know, everybody can look up and get in touch with you at bedandbrunchpr.com. Is that the best place for them to hook up with you? Yes. Okay, so that's the website, everybody, to go and keep up with Maria. And this next year, let's make it good, right? 2021. Do you think mm-hmm. travel travel's going to start going back to normal, Maria? Like it's going to still be weird, I think. But we're, I feel like we can still kind of. It's better than the beginning of last year, right? It's better than it was, and I think that you know over time, I think that you know we will definitely be heading back in in that direction. I don't know how quickly, but I think that that's where things are headed. Mm, absolutely. Well, well, I don't think. People are going to stay indoors forever. They're just not going to. So they're going to travel, and they just need to travel safely with precaution. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's going to be different everywhere. And that's mm-hmm. the thing is to keep you know reading travel travel stories and newspapers, uh, TV, radio shows everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, magazines. Check it out, and also keep up with you know websites. Of, of destinations that you're going to and also call make a call as a guest before you travel somewhere make a call if you can and uh, have that connection with the b&b's and that's another great thing about b&b's boutique hotels they will take your calls and you'll have that personal connection before you go there and right. always try to book directly through them um at the b&b websites because if you book it through a you know third party and you have to make a change or they have to make a change, it becomes a mess. <laughs> so it's always better to book directly, and then you're supporting a small business directly as well. Uh, so everyone, again, bedandbrunchpr.com. We want to thank Maria. As always, it's such a pleasure. Uh, you've sent us on quite a road trip of bed and breakfast this year. So when you see the big list, you know, just know it's all your <laughs> fault. Yeah, we had so much fun. <laughs> and we're yeah, so excited thank you. For all oh, of you're our welcome. Thank audience. you both very much. And we're happy for our audience and for everyone. I mean, it's really about that, that relationship building. So, um, you know, we always love to play music for our guests. So, Maria, your song today, because we, and we've played this for Bed and Breakfast, too, it's just perfect. It's called Ham and Eggs. It's from our friend uh, James Byfield <laughs> and his, uh, his uh, band Blind Lemon Pledge. And you can keep up with him at blindlemon-pledge.com. So thanks so much, Maria. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. 
Take care. I found a dollar in an old pink coat. I rode for a long, long time. I couldn't have come at a better moment because I was down to one thing to die. I marched my dollar and that dime down to Big Bill's diner. Because when you tie your feet back on me, ain't no diner finer. Oh, Big Bill was waiting for me. By the kitchen door He takes my coat And my pork pie hat And says I know what you're here for Ham and eggs And a flapjack stack Ham and eggs And a flapjack stack Ham and eggs And a flapjack stack And red eye gravy all over If I was a pharaoh with a half a million slaves I'd abdicate my crown and throne For a plate of big bills eggs Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack And a red eye gravy all over He took my coat and my pork pie hat and says, I know what you're here for. Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack. Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack. Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack and red eye gravy all over. If I was elected Pope, I'd wear them satin slippers. Just one stack of Bill Slapjacks And I'd win one for the Gipper Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack And red eye gravy all over Ham and eggs and a flapjack stack And red eye gravy all over